Hello, and welcome to Racken Lab 1010, Managing Groups of Machines Using Clusters. This is a great introductory lab and has no prerequisites for you to use the system, just a freshly installed digital rebar system. And that's exactly what I have right here. You'll notice that we're in the system bootstrap wizard, and the bootstrapping has completed all the steps all the way into research, brokers, clouds, and machines. And we're going to go ahead and create clusters and machines in this lab. You'll notice that we only have the one bootstrapping machine already set up, and that, that machine's name matches the name of our endpoint ID. In step one, we're going to go to the clusters view and then add a cluster. We're going to name our cluster Lab 1010, and we're going to set the broker name to Context Broker. We can set any number of machines that we want, and I like to set an icon to make this cluster distinctive. It's good practice. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save, and then jump over to the Activity view. Step 2, Observing Operation. You can see the system is very quickly going through the operations that we need to complete. In a more active system, actually provisioning real infrastructure from a cloud or bare metal, the cluster provision step would take some time. Here, we're just waiting for the cluster to complete its systems, and we can see it's already finishing that work. Our machines are coming on, and they're online. What's happened here is the cluster, as it built, called a resource broker, or context broker, that context broker, we can observe the activity and see that it has run a work order. If we drill into that work order, which we can do here, we're going into our work orders list and connecting to it here, we can actually see all the steps that the broker ran to create that work order. We can actually expand them and see different operations that were taken as that process was completed. We can also check our overview page and see the different components that are available. If a cluster is actively building, we'll actually see a heartbeat view. This cluster was built so quickly, we didn't have a chance to render that view. We do get a chance to see the different statistics that have run in the system as it built and operated different workflows. So we can identify different tasks that were run. We can see their standard deviations in a whisker chart format and see variants. We can even look at it by blueprints and see how those blueprints have run. We haven't run any blueprints in the system, so that's not a particularly interesting view. Now that we've actually taken a cluster, built it, had that cluster build machines for us, let's take a look at those machines. Individually, each one of these machines has its own workflow that's been run, has parameters that have been defined as its operation, including a deep scan inventory and information about the container itself been assigned profiles assigned to the cluster, and we can go and look at the specific activity that was run as part of this machine's, specific machine's workflow. Now that we've done those things, it's time to do a little bit of cleanup. To remove the cluster and the machines, all we have to do is convert it back into workflow mode, and then clean up that operation. Once we clean up, you can see it going through the cluster provisioning. We're going to look at the activities again. The machine has been deleted, but that cluster activity actually went back to our resource broker, made an additional request to do the cleanup work, and then that removed the machines from the system. So at this point, we've created a cluster. We've logged all the work that was necessary for it to be done not just as work orders, but the jobs that were necessary to make that work go. You can see the icons actually carried through. And we have now removed the resources that were allocated by that cluster along with the cluster. As an extra step, one of the things that we like to do is demonstrate how we can use the CLI to perform operations in addition to just doing things through the UX. Digital Rebar is actually an API and CLI first product. And the UX is done uh, to help new users, but we expect advanced users to move their operations into CLI and API operations. In this case, I've just called a cluster create operation. And you can see behind me that it's actually doing the work in the UX. The so UX gets live updates as it does that operation. And now if we jump over to the overview page, can actually see that cluster going through its heartbeat process. Here's the cluster in wait. 
these other machines are building. We can see live status as they go through their pipelines. And once those pipelines complete, the cluster will show that it's ab absolutely done. There we go. So next, since we've completed this, we actually want to switch the cluster. Let's jump back to the cluster view so we can see it. We want to switch the cluster back into work order mode, just like I did through the UX. Simple command, work order off. And then I want to clean up the cluster and let it be deleted. So simply clusters cleanup. You'll notice here we're doing exactly the same thing. The API is kicked in. We're running the uh, reverse process. We're doing the cleanup operations. CLI and UX have exactly the same modes of operation. And you have the benefit of getting live updates immediately of any operations that are happening anywhere in the system through the UX. Thank you for joining me for Lab 1010. Uh, this completes this instruction. For your next step, we highly recommend you look at Lab 1020, building a multi-cluster using a predetermined Terraform resource broker. Thank you.